Okay, so in today's video, we're gonna be making an alien landscape. We're gonna be using a really cool free add-on, which I'm really excited about. So let me show you what it looks like and we'll get into it. All right, so this is the render we're gonna be making. We're gonna make this plane, all this stuff. Got this HDRI in the background and this geometry, which is gonna be used with that add-on. Side note, this is my Instagram right here. If you make it, feel free to send it to me. I love to see you guys' work. So let's get into it. All right, so first shift A and we're gonna add a plane. Hit S, eight, scale it up by eight. And we're gonna be doing this. Now let's subdivide it. So tab, right click, subdivide, and we're gonna give it 100 subdivisions. All right, now let's add some displacement. So we're gonna add a displace modifier. First, we're gonna add the subdivision surface modifier, then the displace. Right here on the strength, give it a strength of 0.1. I'll bring it close to the bottom and then click new right here. And this little button that'll bring you over to the textures. We're gonna add a clouds texture. Right here on the depth, we're gonna bring the depth all the way up so we can get some nice detail. And then right down here on colors, click that, click color ramp, and we're gonna take this and we're just gonna slide it over till you can start seeing that top right there. So we're gonna do right about there. Let's add the view. So now you can see right here on the subdivision surface in your modifiers, right here on view. So we're gonna put it on two for now just to see how it's going. We're gonna right click, shade smooth, and so, Right here on the render, let's give it a render of three and we'll get a, give it a view of one for now so we don't overload our computer. All right, now let's go back to the texture. Click right here and let's change the scale. To something a bit bigger, I mean smaller. I think this, this probably works. So we're gonna stick to this for now. Now let's add one more plane. Hit S8, scale it up. And this will be the water. So we're just gonna bring it, bring it up just like that till it's right here on the edge. So now you have the water and the plane. So now let's shade this. So we're gonna be using cycles for this, but we wanna turn off bloom for the preview. So click cycles, change to EV, and just turn off bloom if you have your default settings on. For previewing, I usually have ambient occlusion, subsurface scattering, screen space, and volumetric. So let's go back to cycles and let's switch to the shading preset in Blender 2.8, just like this. I'm gonna hit Z and look dev. All right, so let's select the first plane, give it a new texture, I mean a new shader. Right here in the base color, we're gonna give it kind of a maroon, dark color, kinda like that. That looks pretty good. Now let's add a bump node. Plug the bump node right here into the normal and let's add a Voronoi texture just like this, plug it into the height, and we're gonna change distance to, I believe, yes, Manhattan. And then let's add a color ramp right in between these two nodes. So what that's gonna do, it's gonna do this kind of the same thing as we did on the displacement, which is just kind of plateau it. All right, so we're gonna take the color ramp and the black portion, and we're just gonna bring it in just like that, kind of change the size of these things, but we're really just kind of plateauing them. So we're gonna keep it right about there and let's add two nodes, a mapping node, plug the vector into the vector and a texture coordinate, and we'll plug the object into the vector. All right, so now we have all these little squares and we need to kind of mess them up. So what we're gonna do here on the vector line is add a noise texture right here. And now we wanna have a little control over what's going on. So first thing I wanna do, you can kinda of see how the bump makes it look like they're extruding up. Just click invert and now it looks like they're the holes. So a little trick for you if you wanna make them go up and down on the invert. So now we bring up the detail here and now they're very detailed uh, rips and holes, but we wanna have some control over that. So bring that over, add a mix RGB, plug that right there, take the object coordinate, plug that into color two. And so what that's gonna do, this is what it looks like originally here on the factor, and then you bring it over and that just adds a little bit of detail to those sort of square looking holes that we have. So if you bring it all the way over there, that's this. Bring it all the way over here, that's this. So we'll just give it just enough detail so we're happy with it. And now we have our area. We need to add one more bump node because right now this is too smooth. So we'll just shift D, duplicate it, plug the normal into the normal add a noise texture right here, put the color into the height, bring up the detail, bring up the scale by probably 50, yeah. 
and then now it's too much so right here on the strength bring it to right about there so we can barely see it and let's duplicate the noise texture change the scale to 10 and plug the color into the vector all right so now we have these big dents and then these little bitty bumps so now we have a really good floor let's just get the water real quick super easy click new get a new principled bring your roughness all the way down bring your transmission up so now we have our water and let's just add a bump node here right there plug the normal of the normal get a noise texture plug the color into the height so we're gonna get the ripples so now we have our ripples let's just bring up the scale so now we have some nice ripples with our water and our plane all right now let's go and model this thing with the help of a really cool add-on called rando mesh so big shout out to Midge here he created this add-on and you can kind of see what goes on it takes geometry and just sort of messes with it and screws it up and does this crazy stuff so let me show you where to get this and how to install it all right so I'm gonna link this in the description so you can get it right here on clone and download just download zip so get the zip and unpack it and you'll go to edit preferences and right here on add-ons you'll go to install you'll go to the desktop or wherever you saved it find rando mesh rando mesh master right here and you'll see the py double click that and that will install the add-on and then once you get it you're gonna see it right here on the side just bring it out and now we have all this so first let's find a good composition for our, our scene I like this right here mainly because of these running lines it'll bring your eye to the object so I'm gonna bring it right there shift a add a camera and then control alt zero that'll snap the camera to view and then I'm just gonna bring it down and sort of position our camera in a good spot I'm gonna make our camera simulate a wide angle lens so click on it bring it here and let's bring it maybe probably a 30 millimeter lens probably looks pretty good and bring it in just like this all right so this looks pretty good we'll probably change it some more as we go but uh this looks good now all right now let's add in our icosphere so shift a and we'll get here and then we'll subdivide it all the way number of cuts we'll put 10 number of cuts and we'll just put it in the area general area that we want it so just like that so we'll take our camera bring it all the way up here just like this and we'll scale it up and this looks pretty good all right now let's use the add-on so again the add-on really just takes geometry and just destroys it just like it says right here destroy that mesh so I'm gonna uncheck keep original mesh and I'm gonna duplicate this and hit H to hide it for now and here on iterations I'm gonna keep it at five keep in mind that this can crash your computer if you have a high poly mesh and you have a high iteration number it can really mess things up so you would do some tests start at one iterations and keep going up until it crashes your computer um, for this one it's fairly low poly so we're gonna keep it at five iterations and we're gonna click wireframe because we want to have those wireframes to do, do some cool stuff so now we click destroy that mesh and watch the magic all right so now we have some pretty insane geometry going on in our scene you can kind of go in and you just got wild detail with this this took quite a quite a bit of time uh, my computer crashed once but five iterations is the max that I'll go to on a model so now that we have this we'll take the uh, other icosphere so we'll take the other icosphere pass it up and we're gonna do another really interesting trick so first hit tab click here on the vertex groups click new and click assign so we're gonna do a really cool masking trick so go to the modifiers click vertex weight edit and we're gonna do a couple things here so first select the vertex group click group add group remove right here on fall off click custom curve and just flip it just like that you'd flip the curve and then right down here click new little texture button and we're just gonna pick a clouds texture I'm gonna do this part really doesn't matter just do whatever you want with the textures now go back to the modifiers and we're gonna add a mask so click the mask vertex group add that vertex group now nothing happened visually we got to go back here to the texture 
right down here like we did click the color click the color ramp icon and just slide it over and now you can see it dissolves in now this is a really cool motion graphics thing you can do if you have like a world or I mean really anything and just sort of dissolve a new object in front of it but we're gonna take right here and let's go and add a solidify and we'll just take the solidify and bring it out a little bit and let's apply everything because we're going to rando mesh this as well. I'm going to bring it down to two iterations and destroy the mesh. All right, now we have tons and tons of detail. Uh, at this point, you, you would probably want to save your uh, project because you never know what's going to happen. So I'm just going to sa save it on my desktop and let's continue working. So now we have this. Let's add this guy right here. By the way, just a tip, the more detail you put on these big objects, the larger they seem when it comes to the scale, as well as on the camera, making it that 30, minute, that 30 millimeter wide angle lens also adds to the scale of our, our scene here. So let's get the uh, other ball. First thing we're gonna do is add some interesting composition. I'm gonna take the camera, I'm gonna hit R, and just take it just like that, and that just really makes the scene quite a bit more dynamic. And let's add in another icosphere. And we'll subdivide it, give it 10 cuts, right click, shade smooth, and let's bring them right over here. Bring them up, and then I'm gonna hit G to just sort of position them in a good spot. So this is pretty good. Now let's add our little wires, and that's gonna be done with a curve. We're gonna use the path right here. And then let's just bring it into the area that we want. We'll just rotate it just like that. Right in this area. Perfect. And we'll rotate it just a little bit more. Cool. And then I'm going to scale it down. If you hit tab and you can click one of these points and that lets you bend it just like that. All right, now let's go to the NURBS path settings. Click geometry and we're going to go right down here to depth and just give it, you know, some geometry. So we're going to take this one, I'm going to duplicate it, bring it up a little bit, and then I'm going to change the positioning of what's going on just to add some variety. We don't want them to just duplicate the same wire because that's not that it's not that good for design. And we'll take it, bring it up, bring this one down. All right, now we have our wires in a pretty good composition. Let's go on to adding some lights. All right, so what we're gonna use is HDRI Haven for this is all free HDRIs. And right up here, I'm gonna click on Skies, and I'm gonna and I'm gonna pick Kiera One Dawn. This is one of my favorite HDRIs on it. I'm gonna scroll down and click 4K and download it. All right, now that you've downloaded the HDRI, we're gonna go over here to the World option here, click Color, and Environment Texture. Right here, Open, and I'm gonna navigate to where I saved it. So now that you've saved it, let's go to Look Dev, and right up here when it says shading, you can click scene world and scene lights, and that'll show you what's going on in it in the EV viewport. And we're gonna rotate this around a little bit till we till I like what I see. So in order to actually move your HDRI, go back to the shading icon here, the shading preset. And of course we got to scene world, scene lights. And right up here, you're gonna see where it says object, click to world, and we're gonna add two nodes, a mapping and a texture coordinate. So add the mapping, plug the vector into the vector, and a texture coordinate. And we'll plug in the generated to the vector. All right, so I'm just going to twist it around until I get the lighting in the way that I want. Okay, so if you want to copy what I'm doing here, here on the rotation, the X is 3.7, the Y is negative 1.3, and the Z is 610. So now that we have the lighting good, Let's go and check out the cycles render real quick. All right, it's looking pretty good. We just need to bring up the strength of our lights. So we'll give it a strength of, give it a strength of two. That looks pretty good. All right, now let's shade this. So we'll just click on one of these boxes. I mean, circles, not a box. Click new here in the textures and we're gonna just bring up metallic. And now that we have a metallic shader here on the wireframe, we're gonna select the circle there, put the same material on that. Actually, let's select the 
wireframe and we're going to put a different material on it. So we'll new, we'll make it metallic and we'll just change the color to, let's make it sort of yellow, sort of kind of orange. And we'll select this, we'll put the original metallic, actually no, sorry, that material on the wireframes and this one we'll put that metallic shader on it. So now we have some interesting color going on here. For this one we're gonna put a new shader on that, make it metallic, make it fairly dark, and then also put that same shader on all of our tubes just like this. Just plug it in and there we go. All right, all we have left to do is to add some volume. I did add quite a bit of volumetrics here and a light right here to put some more color. So let's add that volume. So what we're gonna do, shift A, add a cube and scale it up just like that. And we'll go to the shading tab here and it's still in the world. We'll go to object, add new shader. So we're gonna delete this principled and add a principled volume right here plug the volume into the volume and now we got some stuff going on we're gonna change the density to 0 0.1 right here in the density and the emission strength give it 0 0.02 just like that and so now we got a good bit of volume going on which makes which means it's gonna take longer to render but it's gonna look really really good all right, so you can you can definitely render this in Eevee if you were to. This is what it would look like. You can change some stuff up. Personally, I believe the cycles render looks way better, so I'm just going to show you how to render it for your settings and cycles. So right here on the little printer icon, you're going to keep it 1920 by 1080, or if you want it to be a 4K, uh, 4K export, you would just type in 200 here, and that doubles that, which is 4K. But I'm going to keep it on 100, and... Right back here, right back up here on the camera, we're going to go to the performance. Keep your tile size at 256. And if you have a render, I mean, if you have a, uh, a GPU, I would use GPU compute to render here. On color management, change it from high contrast to very high contrast if you're in the filmic uh, view transform. I would put it on filmic for sure. And then here on sampling, keep it at 128. And then here, turn it on denoising and keep it at the default settings right here and that'll give you a really nice clean render so there you go you made an alien landscape again if you make it send it to me on instagram i'd love to see your work and thanks for watching